Hello everyone, I'm Dave Thomas and today I am preparing an Aerotech RMS 2440 motor casing with a reload. Now they have quite a few that go to this particular case uh, anywhere from E to small F engines and today I'm going to be loading the E18-7. Now this particular kit comes as a three pack and so we'll want to hold on to the instructions and everything for later. Right, for now, I'm going to just open this up. And I'm going to save this so that I know what the other motors are when I put this back away. Uh, and it also contains all of the um, detailed information here. So I'll just set that aside. And I'm going to carefully cut open the bag here. Now on mine, they've got the igniters situated right next to where I need to cut. So we definitely don't want to cut those. Okay, I'm going to set those aside as well. Okay, now we'll take out the instructions. And I recommend, no matter how many times you've done this, read the instructions. Uh, because every casing is a little bit different. And every so often they'll come up with a new way of packing things if they change formulations and things like that. Now one thing you will need that is not included with the reload kit is a little bit of silicone grease. Um, I use Super Lube. This can be found in uh, automotive stores in the electrical part uh, where it's used as a dielectric grease for trailer hookups and things like that. As I recall, my motor case here actually came with a small tube of this, but not all of them do. Alright, so we will need that. I'm going to go ahead and unscrew the parts here. So as a forward closure here, um, that will house the delay charge and the ejection charge. The aft closure holds the main part of the motor inside. Okay, so kind of looking through this kit, uh, basically there's three or multiples of three of everything. So we'll just pull things out here. All right, so that's a, a, an insulator for the forward section. Here's our propellant charge. Okay, um, that looks like a spacer there. All right, then we have a delay insulator. The delay charge itself is in its own little package here. Okay, the little red capsule here contains the ejection charge, so don't open that until you're ready to put it in. Alright, then we've got um, kind of a small but thick O-ring, and that will go up here for the delay charge. And then we have O-rings that are wider in diameter. Okay, one's a fairly thin one, the other one's about the same thickness as the delay O-ring there. So you should have a total of three O-rings, and they're all a little bit different. Alright, and then we'll need a nozzle. And I think that's it. If we come across something else, we'll, we'll go back into the package here. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is take the delay insulator, that's this part here, and our delay grain, and we're going to install the delay grain into that insulator. Now, a lot of times it has little specks or ridges in here, and so you can take your thumbnail and just kind of chamfer those around there, deburr it. That'll help this go in easier. Alright, so that should go in like this. Now in some cases there may be a spacer. For this kit there is not. It already fits flush there. Right. Now, before we do anything else here with the O-rings, which are coming up next, I'm just going to take a very small amount of this grease, put it on my finger here, and I'm just going to give a light coating to all of the O-rings. You don't have to have it 
glommed on there. Just enough to make them shiny is really all you need. And this helps them seal properly. It also makes it easier to get them out again when we go to clean this up later. Okay, so now we're going to take the Ford closure here. We're going to put the smallest O-ring down all the way up against the forward wall here, and then we're going to add our delay grain. Now, if you need to change this, Aerotech makes a delay um, boring tool that will allow the removal of some of the d delay grain if you need a shorter delay than what's on here. It turns out that the rated delay on this, which is 7 seconds, is exactly what I need for the rocket that I'm flying. So I'm not going to do anything to that. All right. Now, if you do need to do that and you've never done it before, go look on Apogee Components website. They have an excellent video on how to use those delay grain changing kits. Okay. For mine, I'm just going to go ahead and push that in. Okay, and again, they show a spacer ring here. Um, this kit does not have it, so we don't have to worry about that. Right, I'm just going to set that aside for a moment. Okay, next we're going to use the propellant grain here. And if your propellant grain came inside the liner tube, that's fine. If it didn't, if it's just out, that's also fine. Um, but we're going to have to put some masking tape um, over one end here. Okay, and the idea here is this is going to keep the igniter from going past the end of the tube here. All right, and then you can just kind of trim this back. You don't want to have a big fold of it here. Uh, in fact, I'm going to go ahead. And this is usually just for their E motors that use this casing. The F motors, you shouldn't need to worry about it. But since this is an E, okay, and then the rest of that you can kind of put on there like that. And now we're going to put this back up inside the liner tube. And just like we did with the delay tube there, we can go ahead and just use a thumbnail to deburr and chamfer this out. All right, we're going to stick this back in with the masking side first and I'm going to push this down till it's flush. Okay, and now we're going to use this spacer ring. This goes on the forward end where we put the masking tape. So this goes over that masking tape region. All right, now we'll take the casing, decide which end is forward. Um, it doesn't matter which end you use. I always put the Aerotech logo down at the aft end. So I'm going to slide this in. Okay, and then I'm going to take the insulating ring here. And that goes right on top. All right, it's getting a little stuck there. It's going to go right on top of the liner like that. Okay, and then we're going to take the thinner of the two large O-rings, so this is the 1 16th inch thick, and we're going to put that down on top of the insulator. Okay, and it's okay if you push it down, you can push it back up again. Alright, now we'll take, oops, that's the nozzle, now we'll take the forward closure here where we already mounted the delay grain, and just screw that on. Okay, and that should very easily come all the way down to the edge of the motor casing there. If it's stuck um, or if it's not going in easily, don't force it. Back it off. Make sure you haven't cross-threaded it or that you got the O-ring stuck in the threads. All right, now from the aft end, go ahead and push that forward. And now we're going to add the aft O-ring. Now, something to be aware of, they're actually putting the igniter in first. Okay, and that is allowable with mid-power uh, rocket motors. It's not allowable with high power. High power, you should always load the igniter when it's on the pad. Okay, but in some cases, the, the head of the igniter is too thick to pass through the nozzle. 
So we'll just go ahead and pull one of our igniters out here. Um, in the past, this has not been a problem for me, but we'll go ahead and check. So we'll take an igniter. All right, we'll just put the other two back in the tube here. All right, I'm just going to take the nozzle here, and this would be the aft end of the nozzle, and I'm just going to make sure this fits up in, and it does. Okay, So as long as it does that, go ahead and just assemble the whole, whole motor, and then put your um, nozzle together, or and then put the igniter in after you put the nozzle together. All right, and I actually got ahead of myself. We don't want this one in quite yet. Okay, so we're going to put the nozzle in first, all right, and use that to kind of squish everything forward. All right, then we're going to put in the O-ring. Okay, and then we put on the closure, and it's going to be tight here. Okay, so be careful not to cross-thread. All right, and these little corners here do get kind of sharp. Um, Aerotech makes a little wrench for these. You can also download the STL file to 3D print your own. Um, I found this on Thingiverse. And so I'll just put this on here and it actually works with all of the mid-power ones. Um, this one I printed with a filament printer. I've got another one that I printed with a resin printer and both of them work fine. Okay, so just tighten that down until it seats. All right, and then that is ready to go. Now, generally what I'll do with these, since case, you know, once it's in the case, you have no idea what it is. So go ahead and take a piece of masking tape here and just write on it what your engine is. Okay, so this was an E18-7. All right, and I'll just take my igniter here, and then the tape, right, and then I'll just put this in my box of things that are ready for launch. Not it. One last thing. Okay, so the last thing we need to do is put on the ejection charge. Um, and you might want to wait and do this, um, and do it right before you load this in. Um, that is better in case that you're, you know, you get out there and you end up not launching. Um, and you don't have to worry about the ejection charge rattling around in there ahead of time. Uh, I am going to go ahead and do this to show you how it's done. All right, so you've got a, a smaller piece inserted inside of a, a bigger one. All right, so stand it up so the bigger piece is on top. Just tap it a few times to get everything to the bottom. All right, and carefully pull this apart. All right, and inside there we've got the black powder for the ejection charge. Now take the motor casing, hold it upside down, and click that into place. All right, and then you just take it up and just tap it a couple of times to make sure we have good contact between the ejection charge and the delay grain. And then the other part's going to go over your nozzle. And I'm going to go, I guess I'll go ahead and undo this again here to show you what I mean. So this will be used to hold the igniter in place. And they recommend cutting a little notch here on the edge, just a couple of millimeters long, about an eighth of an inch. All right, just a little notch like that. Okay, and then we're going to put the igniter in. Now, since this is a shorter um, propellant grain than the case is, and that's why we had to put that spacer and the masking tape on, we don't want to try and shove this all the way to the top. We just want to put it in until it meets that masking tape. All right, now they put a little insulation on here to help keep things together. Sometimes you can move it out of the way. Sometimes you can't. All right, we'll just go with it. So I'm going to go ahead and, again, gently slide this in. Now, it does have to go past the nozzle. I'm just hitting a little bit of resistance here. There we go. Oop, I broke it. 
All right, now this is a problem that you can run into um, because of these igniters. All right, I'm going to go ahead and get another one here. All right, and if you find that you're breaking igniters like that, um, it probably means you go ahead and use the method they use and install the igniter first. There we go. Okay, so it's going to go into there. All right, and you just kind of bend that into an S shape, and then the cap goes on like this. You don't have to jam it on. Um, that, when it's up inside the rocket now, um, when you put it on the launch pad, just hook these up to the igniter clips. Um, and, but, excuse me, this holds this in place up against the propellant there um, for just a split second before everything ignites. And this notch here allows a little bit of the, the pressurized gases to escape um, and ideally helps prevent chuffing and, and things like that. If you ever watch these launch, sometimes they'll sit there and go... Sh -sh 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 -sh. All right, that's actually a waste of propellant here. So this lets a little bit of pressure build, um, but not a lot, so much that it, it puffs out and then has to uh, wait again here. So theoretically, that's how it all works. If you do happen to lose this, you can just tape this on with a piece of masking tape. Okay, so with that, have a great launch and a safe recovery, and please stay tuned for more of my videos.